everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Daily Wisdom Words Podcast. I'm your co-host, Neil Turedi. Hello, everyone. I'm Rini O'Day. I'm also your co-host. We want to thank everyone for joining us today and give a warm welcome to, to our latest episode. Join us every Saturday at 9 a.m. Pacific time as we talk to guests who have stories, advice, and life hacks, all of which take you one step closer to the feeling of hope. Today, we welcome physician and stress management expert, Dr. Cindy Ackrell. Hi, Dr. Cindy. Hi. Oh, how are you all today? Very well. Very, very, very very well. well. Thank you. You had uh, mentioned you're in North Carolina, huh? Yeah. Um, yeah. The, mountains, the mountains of North Carolina, which has been uh, not a bad place to be quarantined. No, not at all. <laughs> right. Uh, I, we're gonna, Neil and I are going to come join you for a while. So my... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah my, and then you're going so to come out to South California. Yeah. <laughs> I know, right? We just invite yeah. ourselves places. Don't worry about yeah. us. We're good <laughs> <Yeah>. guests. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, well, let's get started. Um, okay. One thing we are here to, when we're going to get just a little bit into your background and how you got into what you do today. But before we do that, um, I've heard you say that one of the first things to deal with stress is to find out what stress is physiologically and recognize it, right? So can we start with that? Can you tell us what exactly is stress from a physiological standpoint? What goes on in our heads when we're stressed out? Sure. It is this really wonderful, helpful response system that evolved through the different creatures to us. Um, And it's absolutely a perfect system for reacting to something acute. Say you're driving in traffic, you get cut off and you wind up in the other lane and your heart is pounding and you forgot what you were thinking about before you started it. Well, that was your stress system taking over to save Mm -hmm. you because your brain's number one priority is to keep you safe. So it has this wiring to help keep you safe. And that wiring cuts off what you were doing and starts all these automatic reactions so that you can be prepared to fight the danger. And it does things Mm -hmm. like um, increase your clotting. So if you were cut, you wouldn't bleed as well, which explains heart attacks. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah. Um, it, yeah. So your vision gets better, your hearing gets better, all acutely focused what? on the danger at hand. <laughs> See, you're not stressed. Right. <laughs> but, not but when it's used chronically, it really is detrimental. It uses up our energy. It um, takes the place of lots of the healthy things that our bodies should be doing. So when you say, what is it like when we feel stress? It's that our minds are kind of wrapped around something, living in the past or projecting to the future. And physically, we're reacting to, reacting to that. So our heart rate might be up. Our breathing might be up. Um, our thinking mm-hmm. isn't as clear because the blood goes from your frontal lobe, your thinking center, to your legs so you can run from the danger. Great if there's something right. to run from, not great if it's COVID. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay, that's the show, guys. No. <laughs> that, that was a perfect answer, let me tell you. Okay, so yeah. with that in mind, let's go back a little. And can you tell us a bit about your background and how you got into doing what you do? I think you said before that your daughter has ADHD. Yeah. And it's um, a, it sparked an interest in neuroscience. It, it did. Um, it's a long, circuitous story. There was a whole podcast, probably. We but got all day. We got all day. day. <laughs> really down. Most I'm of here us, with you, girl. <laughs> most of us go into something that we're either super good at or we really need. I'm in category B. Um, I was totally stressed out when I was in medical school. I was trying to get pregnant and doctors kept telling me that, you know, just stress less. But nobody could tell me what that meant. Fast forward, my stress kept getting worse because I'm one of those people who stresses pretty easily. And there are a range of people. I'm more responsive. And I um, was raising my ADHD daughter. And truth be told, we cannot blame her. It, I, we come from a long lineage of ADHD. Um, and it's a, it's a little bit more stressful existence to put that square peg in the round hole of life. 
Um, right. you we're not always fitting in and there's some natural stress to that. To parent it is a little more stressful, um, rewarding but stressful. And so I was still interested in it. My daughter was told to go on medication and I thought, well, what else is there? And I found out about neurofeedback and my inner geek came alive again. I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool. We could train <laughs> our brains. That's really mm -hmm. awesome. Um, then in the course of doing that, realized that a stressed brain just doesn't train as well. We know we don't learn as well. We know we don't think as well when we're stressed. But I had like living proof right there with all the physiology hooked up to machines. So it was really easy to connect the dots and say, oh, this is a problem. And then to start to explore, okay, well, there must be different things we can do about it. And um, that was the beginning of my journey. Right. So I know in a news story, well, check you interviewed that we're seeing other people as risks, which we're not trained to do, except in war, especially in these kinds of variants, COVID and all that. So can you elaborate on that a little bit, what you exactly meant and what advice would you tell people like that? You said the scenarios of living in and all that are getting chaotic for so many people. So talk a little bit about that and, and what, you, well, what advice I, you would give those people. Who are can I interject something? Go ahead. I read on Twitter this Please. morning, this is the new thing. This woman was walking down the street and this other woman licked her hands, ran up to the woman, put her hands on her face and tried to pull her mask down. And then this man said that he was walking his baby and this guy walked by and spit on the baby. <gasps> so these are like, this is like attempted murder. Yeah. Yeah. I had a similar experience last year, not quite as bad as bidding on a baby, but I was taking a walk and I was on the phone with friends, which is a benefit of COVID. I back in you touch get to, with, yeah, okay, yeah, back in touch with some college <laughs> friends on a regular yep. basis. And this mm -hmm. woman starts following me in the park, yelling at me because I had a mask on. And I said, you know, I just walked away. And, and luckily I have much longer legs than she had. <laughs> so I kept going, but she kept following me and yelling at me and coughing in my direction. I'm like, what the is going on with you? I mean, I'm making my yeah. choice. You make your choice, whatever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. They would have arrested wow. her. They would yeah. have arrested yeah. her. That really yeah. is attempted murder. Well, you know? and I think all of our emotions are heightened. And we are, our brain's number one job, as I said earlier, is to keep us safe. So it's constantly scanning our environment to see, is that a snake? Are we going to be hit by a car? Is that person nice? Is that person mean? It's exhausting to be that vigilant. Mm -hmm. And now we've had to add it up a lot more. I, if you remember back to the beginning of the pandemic and you went to the grocery store, you needed a nap afterwards. <laughs> so it's so <laughs> exhausting to negotiate the <laughs> list, the cart, mm -hmm. making sure nobody else is on that aisle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I know. It just took yeah, so much more vigilance. And then add right. in the emotional components of this and a world that's been traumatized, another huge section of this world that is grieving or dealing with massive loss, whether it be of people they love or jobs or circumstances. And we're all really on edge and exhausted. Then we're trying to keep ourselves safe. I babysit for my grandchild. So I'm really, really on top of trying to stay safe because she's unvaccinated. So she's too young. Um, but, yeah. But it makes me look at people and kind of go, you know, okay, are you going to give it to me? Are you going to give it to me? And people that we love and trust, we make assumptions about. But I have family members who have made different choices than I have. I still love them. You know, it's mm -hmm. that's been hard it's, for us yeah. to figure out that mm -hmm. you love people who have very different opinions of what's safe and what's not. Um, but it's it's been a process and all of that evaluating is exhausting. Mm, exhausting. <laughs> I agree. Exhausting. Sure. I agree. You know, I actually yeah. don't mind staying home because the world is exhausting right now. It is. Yeah. You really, yeah. like what you said, you scan and you're making sure, like, you know, am I okay? Is that okay? You know, can wow. I touch the shopping cart? <laughs> My husband and that used to be reserved for walking on a dark night that you had to be that. I know. Right you know, now, it's yeah. you know light of day in your neighborhood grocery store. <laughs> exactly. 
exactly. So um, has um, OTD, which is, what is that overthinking disorder? What does OTD stand for now? Uh, I overthinking the same question this morning. <laughs> overthinking disorder. That yeah, right, right? Yeah. You abbreviated OTD. it. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Um, I read an has, abbreviation it, somewhere, yeah, so I assumed, but maybe I was wrong, <laughs> sorry. No, you were right, it was me. It's like two and two is four, not 22. <laughs> That's on me. Overthinking, we were overthinking. <laughs> I'm overthinking. So um, overthinking disorder, it has increased during COVID. And um, is it in more in one gender than, you know, like women or, uh, or is it pretty equal? I mean, do you think women could comment <laughs> on the actual occurrence by mm -hmm. gender? I think those, I think there is kind of a spectrum of people who are worriers to people who are like no big deal. And then there are the silent worriers who say nothing and have a heart attack. Um, but whatever your propensity is, it's been, exaggerated mm -hmm. this time so if you're prone to overthinking we're you know we've been throwing fuel in the fire <laughs> for big time now yeah. um and it's hard to turn that off which is one of the aspects of stress management is to realize that's just your mind doing that um, it's taken off. It got triggered somehow and it's on some automatic path. Most of us can repeat our worries like verbatim without even thinking <laughs> it's because we've practiced yeah. them. We know yeah. them really well. And what we need to do is to practice the awareness of knowing when we flipped into that automatic thinking and ways to get out of it. And thank God for, for people like you that are bringing awareness to mental health issues and to disorders like this because we all have them. Yeah. And my yeah. husband and I were we were watching the ball drop in New York on the on on the first, thirty first. And we were so busy freaking out about the amount of people that weren't wearing masks <laughs> than we were the fact that it was the new year. I'm just... like, oh my God, there were police officers, there were just yeah, Just not even thinking, you know, and, so and, I mean, 20% yeah, of their forces <laughs> out as of today with COVID. So mm -hmm. um, <laughs> there you go. Right. That's yeah. kind of it. I had the is exact same experience. And that's not I mean, that's interfering with your in getting the joy and that mm -hmm. closure on the totally and good. feeling like here I am at a special moment with my spouse mm -hmm. as the year turns. Mm -hmm. And how was this past year? And what do we want for the next year? No, we're all looking at the TV going, oh my God, there are all those people out there. What are they thinking? <laughs> That's exactly what was going through my mind. Exactly. And I don't want to be yeah. that. I no, don't. no. So it takes, yeah, I think one of the gifts of COVID is that it is shining a light on those of us who have fallen into some habits of thought and behavior that aren't helpful. And it's yeah. really nice to realize, first of all, I'm really grateful that stress has become a safe topic because it used to be, mm -hmm. I've been doing this for so long, it used to be something you covered up. I can't let you know that I'm stressed because I'm not, you know, I, then it means I'm not the superhero at work or home or wherever, or I sweep it under the carpet completely, deny it and die from it, or I'm one of those people who spews it instead, like the boss who spews the stress instead of feeling the stress. I think mm -hmm. it's fabulous that stress has become a topic in the workplace, a safe topic, and we need to work to continue to keep those conversations going. I appreciate you all interviewing about it because these are critical conversations to help us figure out how to negotiate life as humans. And right. we were not taught this stuff. So mm -hmm. when we feel stress in our society that has sort of shunned it, way too many people feel shame because of it. It's like, right. oh gosh, you know, Neil seems to be like handling this like a piece of cake. There's something wrong with me that I'm not. 
And that's been our approach to it. And then we double whammy on top of that. It's like, oh my God, there's something wrong with me. Let me worry about that for a while. <laughs> so, I know, right? <laughs> so now I have yeah. shame, worry, depression, et cetera, et cetera. I, um, so I, I'm yeah. grateful to COVID for making this topic become safer. Mm -hmm. And it is mm -hmm. something that we all need to discuss because we weren't taught it. There are some things we need to learn. There's a journey we need to take where we figure out what our relationship with stress is, how we know when we're stressed, what we can do about it when we are stressed, what we can do to prevent as many situations in the future as possible that cause stress. And I don't mean becoming a monk. I mean just being realistic <laughs> about knowing when you're going to be triggered, when you're not going to be triggered, um, making life decisions according to what matters to you, which is makes it way less stressful. There's so many little things you can learn on this journey. And it doesn't mean throw out your life as it is right now. It's just starting yeah. to become aware and tweak it that it gets closer to where you want it. Because I don't yeah. know anybody that isn't stressed right now. Ah, the statistics are alarming. And we were, the statistics were alarming before COVID. But mm -hmm. we I can imagine being a physician, how even harder it is because, you know, you're dealing with people with COVID. I am not. And I actually coach physicians who are. Oh, okay. Um, well, I'm not an active practice. And I look at them and it, oddly, here's another stressor. I feel guilty that I'm not doing that. And I recognize that that's not a helpful thought process, but it's one that I can go to if I'm tired and I can do it really quickly and it spirals into a really big old mess that I'm really good at. Um, and just <laughs> being aware that I can do that, you know, and realizing that what, what's under that is my wanting to help. So how can I help? is the better mm -hmm. question rather than why are you not doing this? Yeah, exactly. And that's a great segue because another thing um, you talked about both learning how to manage stress and how we all need to know about it, learn about it. And that leads to another thing you, you once said that it's stress can also be a mismatch of expectations, right? And you, when you talked about it, when I heard you talk about it, you were talking more about the holidays and what would, you, what would give us joy, what we think will give us joy and all that. Right. So, but it, even in general, even when it's not the holiday period, how do we keep those expectations practical and not start going overboard and thinking, okay, this will give me joy, but clearly when that expectation is not met and that triggers us. So how do we, I guess, keep our heads below the clouds in a way? I think... Well, first of all, the word mismatch works for many things in stress. And there's a great video on American Institute of Stress website called Mismatched, which explains a lot of this. Right. The expectation thing is really interesting because so many of them are based in stories that we don't examine. So first, mm -hmm. sit back and look at your stories. Have a meeting with yourself. What's working in your life? What's not working in your life? What has worked in the past to get you through the hard times? What hasn't worked? And then start intentionally building that more into your life. So when it's Christmas is just the holiday, Christmas, whatever you celebrate, holiday season is the perfect example because we inherited a lot of stories about whether it should be the perfect Norman Rockwell experience or the, you know, European little village and we're all singing carols and drinking blue wine or whatever. Eggnog. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's just, we have these stories we've inherited and mm -hmm. it's just not how it works out. I mean, you know, Maureen, as a mom of kids who have grown up, what you thought life would be like at this age is different. It just very so different. Mm -hmm. And it's, um, maybe yours is Norman Rockwell, mine is not. <laughs> you know, it's, um, and I'm sure there are people listening to this who are thinking, who's Norman Rockwell? <laughs> but I know, right? <laughs> it was that ultimate picture of, you know, it's the card picture that, that of, you know, the whole family's happy. The hallmark, the hallmark. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. 
and I don't get me wrong. I still love a good home <clears throat> movie. But I know, right? <laughs> count on the fact they're going to be happy at the end. But mm -hmm. but it isn't real life. Those um, those little villages where everybody does everything together and they're happy isn't real life. And our it really wasn't until a couple of generations ago that we even expected to live a full life. You know, mm -hmm. the world was mm -hmm. full of dangers, and. We kind We're of, right back there. We're right yeah, back there, aren't we? We're back there, but we weren't trained for it. We don't have the same expectations. And I think that some, like in the beginning, they were doing studies of who was most stressed. And the elderly were a bit less stressed, unless they were anxious people to begin with. But a lot of them mm -hmm. were less stressed because they had perspective on this. Yeah, and right. we don't have perspective on this. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we haven't had saying. more at home other than... Mm -hmm. Or terrorist attacks um we're just not we're not well equipped with the stories to deal with it so what do you think of like journaling because i got three journals for christmas and i'm like, <laughs> I'm like mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. but they're but they're more about gratitude right you know trying to change your mind into getting you know into that gratitude where it's calming your your you know there are fabulous studies on the power of gratitude, and it's one of the tools that you can use to reduce your stress. It's an awesome one. It's got great research behind it. Um, if you cool. sit and breathe slowly and practice gratitude, you may be helping your heart. There's a lot of research done by a company called Heart Math, like arithmetic, Heart Math, on working with gratitude and changing your physiology. There are studies that show that CEOs who do gratitudes at night are better leaders. There are all kinds oh, of wow. so, so the journaling is a great idea. What you're doing with any of these habits is you're interrupting your automatic busy to be present in the moment. And when you add mm. to that, that you're taking moment to feel grateful for something, you're depositing these really nice chemicals on your brain and through your body that are healing and helpful. It, it's also practicing learned optimism. So it's no mm -hmm. good to be Pollyanna and say, oh, the sky is falling, but I'm cool. You know, it's, we have to acknowledge the really scary stuff that's happening and the huge emotions of grief and loss, they have to be acknowledged, but it doesn't mean that we can't practice some learned optimism of finding mm -hmm. hope when the chips are down and finding the things in life that fill us other than the typical things that we're used to so that we can see the glasses half full and figure mm -hmm. out where we're going to know next and use our strengths to get there. Um, and one of the things stress does is it tends to make our thinking more black and white. We lose mm -hmm. the gray zones and these practices like mm -hmm. gratitude or breathing or coming in and checking your perspective or your expectations introduce the gray zones again. You know, right. it's, it's not all good, not all bad. And how can I make the best of who I am and what I want? Well, my, my glass, it's actually a teacup. And the thing that- You go really, with your dog. <laughs> yeah, really, right? This is a brie, by the way. I mean, they kind of switch places. Anyway, um, tea is what, I, that's my go-to to calm yeah. down. Hot tea. I highly recommend it. So what you've done is built a habit that signals your brain that this is a time to relax. Mm -hmm. That's a ritual. And when we build rituals into our life that remind us of our perspective, that give our bodies a moment to get back to neutral, which lets our mm -hmm. mind get back to neutral, these rituals are huge because they, they cue our brains, they take less energy. It's like, you know, having a habit of something that helps you. And mm -hmm. I firmly believe in cues. I mean, there's a reason that people who work hard have a picture of their family on the desk. Mm -hmm. You've got to remember the connection. Yeah. You've got to cue in. Mm -hmm. um, nature is a great cue for our brains. It, the it best. It calm our brains. Yeah. So all of these things, journaling, has, stopping and having the cup of tea, making a ritual like I've done during COVID of talking to my two friends from college and taking a walk. 
rituals really make our brains happy. It's a habit. It doesn't take them as much work. And it brings, if you've chosen your ritual to support your life, then it's a win-win. Right. Wow. That, yeah. that, yeah, that was perfect because that's and exactly what I was just going to ask you. Some, you know, uh, first steps for people to take, um, you know, to cope with it. And right there, you said, get a ritual, do something yeah. that mine's tea. Yours is, talking to friends. Nils is hitting his head against the wall. No, <laughs> yeah, there you no I'm kidding. Yeah. I'm kidding. Yeah. Well, another, another we thing. A, I know. I'm sorry. I, say, I think we all need an, a tool belt of these mm. things. You need mm -hmm. something to help you calm down in the moment when you've been triggered. Somebody disses you in an email or a meeting or something. And rightfully, you may be indignant, but you need something to get it out of your body at that moment so you can think clearly, because otherwise it's going to cloud your thinking. So you need tools for the moment. You need tools for the long term. You need things mm -hmm. that help you stay on track with your life. So it's really a tool belt of these things and starting to notice when you need them, why you need them, and how to use them in practice, because like anything, our brain gets better at them if it practices them. Now, do you think flipping off the email is a good start? Because that's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, turning off the news has been good for me this year. Oh, is that? Um, I, yeah. I'm with yeah. you right there. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Definitely. no news unless it's like a, a story that I feel I need to hear about. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah. My, my morbid curiosity comes into play sometimes, but, um, mm -hmm. or just my, you know, oh, I want to travel, please make it better. <laughs> it's and, I, and in I the grand scheme of things, what a tiny worry, you know? I am, I know, yeah. I have a roof over my head, I'm healthy, I am in a great, yeah. I have a great marriage and, you know, child, and it's, um, you Your know, grandma. Yeah. Aww. My grandma. And that's yeah. way fun. <laughs> and how, how old's the baby? Six months. Yeah. Oh. oh it's, it's I love that age. age. But it's also, you know, it's stressful to think it's about hard. keeping myself <laughs> safe to keep her safe. I better safe than sorry. It's amazing that some of these things you mentioned, like techniques to get started and, you know, take steps in the right direction are are so simple yet we have been like ignoring them right that always surprises me some of these things like another thing you talk about that leads to a great uh the next question is you you've said even a little bit of dehydration something like which is easy to do right easy to hydrate ourselves can diminish cognitive thinking skills so yeah can you go into that a little bit yeah and no. what, how does that work your brain is mostly water, so and your mm -hmm. brain doesn't have stores of sugar and all the things that it needs to make neurotransmitters and stuff. So we need to be hydrated in order to think well and perform well for all the rest of our body to perform well. Water is critical to us. And mm -hmm. a lot of, this is a perfect example. A lot of us have trained self-care out of our lives. We've lost being in mm -hmm. touch with how thirsty we are until we're super thirsty and it finally interrupts our line of thinking in front of our computer to say, <laughs> I'm thirsty, you know, hello right. person, drink. <laughs> I have um, clients, you know, set an alarm on their phone or watch or mm -hmm. whatever, you know, stop and drink or, you know, make the three, if you're bullet journaling, make, you know, five little glasses and you can't fill it in until you drank it to build in, some accountability because it is hard to remember the things that we've trained out of ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, we used to have to do self-care to live and mm -hmm. we still do, but we pretend like that's not true. Um, being chronically dehydrated is really not good for your body. And you may be changing your cognition long-term. You may be changing things that will, you know, your kidney function down the road, but we don't feel it immediately and mm. we're not taking care. On the other hand, I think we have to be really careful about self-care that it doesn't become one more stressor. And it's just this huge pile of shoulds. So I really recommend the sipping approach, taking tiny mm. little 
changes and building them in until they're a habit, doing something that is not freaking you out. I'm never going to make this. I'm not going to drink 18 bottles of water today. No, but could you go to three? Could you go to four? Fill in your little dots for the week because just LA kindergartners, we really like doing that. <laughs> so we like our check mark. Mm-hmm. Get it done for the yeah. week. Then build on that success. You manage to do that. And if you do it for a couple of weeks, it's pretty much going to be a habit and you go on to the next one. Um, and I, I love the word you used, accountability. Yeah. We have to be accountable yeah. to ourselves. No mm-hmm. one's going to come and do this for you. No one's going to come and hand it. you the water. I know, right? You know, I need a butler now. <laughs> Fresh in my a bottle. <laughs> it really, we weren't taught to put ourselves first. We were taught subtly. And I think it's really interesting how culture's subtle language is so powerful. But subtly, we've been taught that self care is selfish. And that we can do it when we finish everything else. And yet we all know the sign, put your own oxygen mask on first, because in an emergency situation, we realize that you're no good to anybody without oxygen. <laughs> so, exactly. so right. you know, it's, it's really the same thing. You were given this wonderful mind and body. It's your vessel to ride out your life. And it needs care. And we tend to take more care of our cars or of the batteries than than we do our own batteries. So one of the first things I do when I work with clients is we start to build that dashboard to know when is your battery running low? And I look at it in multiple perspectives, like a physical energy. How do you know when you're getting tired or thirsty or hungry? Um, How do you know when you're mentally overdone? Like, for me, I know I start making mistakes typing on the computer a lot more mm-hmm. if I'm getting tired, which also means I should take a break because I'm not effective at that point. And if I'm trying to write something new, I'm about as creative, you know, as a potato. <laughs> it's just, you know, um, you've got to take. That's funny. That's funny. Yeah. You, you just <laughs> have to take breaks. And, you know, emotionally, um, I've had a lot this year and I, I lost my mom this year and oh, it, I'm sorry. thank sorry. you. Um, not to COVID to, um, cancer and old age, but it's, um, you know, when you're emotionally overdone and we need to back up from the meltdown to start to notice our first cue. Okay. I'm getting kind of snippy. Or um, I'm fearing, feel, uh, you know, I just watched a commercial and I'm tearful. Hmm. <laughs> you know, I might need to heed yeah. these emotions. Right? That's me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. And it used to be the Folgers commercial. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so 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 I am mom. such a sap. <laughs> but, which goes back to that expectation <laughs> of we should all be happy and loving. Um, but, and then spiritually, when do you know that you're feeling disconnected? from your purpose or your people or to the bigger world and what really matters for you. So there's kind of these four energies that we could start to monitor and then build in the self-care to recharge them again, because we have to recharge. Mm -hmm. And we know this in sports because, you know, you would never Mm -hmm. send your little kid out onto the field if they were exhausted, sick, hadn't had anything to drink or eat, or um, had been up all night crying over something. You wouldn't do it. But we go to work again and again and again, and we shun people who take any time off. And I'm not saying we need to be wimps and you know, do everything, but, but recognize where you are and what needs recharging. You know, Take care of yourself like you're a pro athlete going in the game. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. I love that. And yeah. you, another thing you're really an advocate about, and I am too, is breathing. Breath. Breath is it's life. It's everything. And it can make us stressed and it can make us better. And yeah. you have a technique called the 6-6, six, six, right? I try. There are a bunch of techniques <laughs> and a bunch of techniques that work. I really like six in, six out. 
or five in, five out. I do a lot of that one too. Um, five in, five out adds to up to about six breaths per minute, which is for many people, the ultimate rate of rhythm that matches up with our heart rhythms. All living things have rhythm to them. Even our universe has a rhythm. It expands and contracts. All things with energy have rhythm to them. And healthy rhythms are fluid and gentle. So when you bring your awareness to your breath and create a slow, healthy rhythm, it has multiple effects. When you descend your diaphragm, because instead of breathing... <laughs> like we do when we're stressed out and we're rushing mm -hmm. and doing everything. When you bring your breath down to the bottom of your lungs and remember your lungs are bellows. So if the diaphragm goes down, they open up at the bottom mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that's more effective breathing. So when you bring your diaphragm down, it actually starts chemical reactions that calm your brain, um, wow. which is awesome because you really, until you calm yourself, you don't deal with the stress as well anyway. So whichever yeah. version of breath work, I mean, there's box breathing that the Navy SEALs do. There's four, seven, eight breathing that Andrew Wiles does. What matters mm -hmm. more is that you practice it because like your team, Maureen, when mm -hmm. I've done it for so long that the minute I start doing it, I know that my mind and body go, oh, she's doing that thing again. Will we get to chill out? <laughs> get a little more circulation that. back to her brain. Do this right. thing that <clears throat> um, So it's, it's an ultimate thing. I will put one proviso in there. There are people who have experienced trauma for whom breathing, doing breath work can actually be a trigger. So if you're doing it and you find yourself and you're doing it slowly and well, and you've watched some stuff about it and you find yourself getting more anxious, that's something to discuss with your doctor um, to just, wow. say, you know, that can be trauma at work. Trauma is in all of us. I mean, you yeah. really, because we nobody ever got a handbook of how to raise a child. <laughs> and you know <laughs> it's, it's, lately the thing that's been freaking me out the most because it's the holidays are you see these people go into a child you know into a home and this stress is the Grinch and he goes up into the thing and he takes the stockings down and he yells at the kids and he runs out and I go you have just put yes you've just put oh. so much trauma in your child they think it's funny, and there's nothing funny about it. I thought it traumatized. Was kind of creepy, but that's I know, I right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. And now I wish I had invented it because then we would have, we'd have an island that we could all just go to and not worry <laughs> yeah, about. Like, with that butler, <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. But, yeah. but. And there's there's another example of holding that fantasy. It's fun. It's really fun to think of that island we go to where mm -hmm. we're sipping Mai Tais in the cool breeze and we, we have finished our entire to-do list. Everyone in our family is happy with us. The world is at peace and the climate's in good condition. Well, you know what? <laughs> you need a reality check. Um, you know, okay. how do we get through real life, a life of meaning and a life of meaning is rarely one on the island where you're, you're avoiding every responsibility. I um, think cre creativity is a good way to, to also, mm -hmm. you know, um, deal with stress. If you're yes. creative, you're in a happy place. So finding activities that naturally bring out your flow. Um, mm -hmm. You have to let go of controlling and analyzing to get creative. So you've already done some of the work of releasing your stress when you do mm -hmm. that. Um, mm -hmm. There are mindsets that I think really do help with stress management. First of all, you've mm -hmm. got to get calm. You've got to physically calm yourself so your mind can do its clearer thinking. Then you get clear. What is it that's really stressing you? Get creative with what you can do about it. Get really curious. Ask a lot of questions instead mm -hmm. of just- Have accepting. you written a book? No. Have you written a book? No. Have you <laughs> thought about it? In our series. <laughs> it's, oh, that's great. Um, and then courageous, because it takes courage to do this stuff. It takes mm -hmm. courage to set boundaries. 
It takes mm -hmm. courage to speak up for yourself. It takes courage to change what you're doing, the status quo, or to say to your family, you know what, mm -hmm. we're not doing it this way anymore because it's, it's freaking us all out. Um, right. So there's so much to this, but the, the um, other C that I would add to that is compassion, of doing mm -hmm. all of this with compassion for others and compassion for yourself. Maureen, you mentioned that you know, trauma's out there for so many people. One thing I've learned well as a physician and a coach is that we never, ever know what's going on in someone else's mind. We just mm. don't. So right. judging them is really unfair. We can disagree with a choice they've made, but judging is really unfair. And the same thing for ourselves. Most of us made the best choices we could make under the circumstances while making some stupid mistakes as well. And until we have some compassion for that, we can't grow. Now, Kristen Neff, N-E-F-F, -F, has a great TED Talk on compassion. Oh, um, really? I love TED Talk. Along, along <laughs> with Brene Brown and the vulnerability, these compassion and vulnerability were sort of kicked out of us in our pursuit of success. Mm -hmm. And it's sad right. because they aren't weaknesses. They're actually real strengths. Yes, they have mm -hmm. a shadow side. You can be too empathetic. You can be too mushy. You can be, you can be a whipped dog. But, but the, there's such strengths to using them wisely. Well, I always wondered what made me. Like when I get in an elevator with people or just like on an escalator, I always compliment somebody. Like, oh, I love your shoes or I love your bag or something like that. And I always wondered why, why I did that, where it came from. But I just love telling people. I love talking to people. Yeah. I love making their day, you know? I don't know. That's just well, It sounds like you landed in the right place. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. I love talking thank to you. people. Right. It's funny. It only um, takes and, one compliment. It only to yeah. change someone's day. I, I'm a big fan of that as well, as long as it's mm -hmm. really sincere. Um, because... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cake is ugly. Um, yeah, as long cake as is really ugly. Speaker, I'm a huge fan of that. But I also recognize a shadow side to it. And I'm a pleaser. And I work with a I lot do. of pleasers. And part of pleasing is trying to keep my own world safe. Because if I please them, they aren't a much of a risk mm. to me. Just a shadow side to think about. When, a, it, yeah. when does it bite you? Mm. And why are you doing it? Are you anxious that this person, you know, could somehow be a threat to you? So you're going to please them. Now, wow. that said, yeah. I'm a big complimenter. And I think, you know, mm -hmm. we, can, we can lift each other up and it's a wonderful thing. And I feel better for doing it. But I do recognize in relationships in the past where I've pleased where it wasn't appropriate. Oh, yeah. So for those who, who don't know, can you talk a little bit about a huge part of the stress and techniques? Is it, is it related to the, the parasympathetic nervous system? Is that how you say it? I know you've uh, yeah, talked about the, that. So we have the, the nervous system and wiring I was talking about in the beginning of the hour um, is our sympathetic nervous system, the fight or flight system. We have this counteractive right. system to that, the parasympathetic um, nervous system, sort of the rest and digest. And when they're balanced, when we have sympathetic time and parasympathetic time, we're healthier. Again, the rhythm back and forth between being on and having some off time. Off right. time is a misnomer though, because actually we need that rest time because our bodies are repairing themselves. They are making memories. They're doing all of these things, digesting, getting nutrients to where they need to go. So we need parasympathetic time. There are many ways to get there. There's a good article. Um, I edit the magazine for the American Institute of Stress called Contentment, which oh. you can find at stress.org. And I think it's the last issue or the issue before. I know. Stress.org. Yeah, stress.org. Where's that pencil? Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, yeah, in the the um, one of my colleagues wrote a really good article on like 10 ways to up your parasympathetic tone. There are lots okay. of ways to do it. It's a, there's this huge vagal nerve which goes from our minds to our bodies and back. There are actually more mm -hmm. fibers going from our bodies, which is why we can use our bodies 
with things like breath work or guided visualization or um, progressive relaxation, working out, doing things like that, we can use our bodies to calm our mind using this parasympathetic nervous system. And sleep. Sleep is extremely yeah. important. Yeah. Um, and for some reason, I haven't days. been able to sleep lately. Yeah. Um, the, the holidays, I guess. When I was a young doc, I think this is karma that I've been having trouble sleeping because when I was a young doc, I was probably pretty unsympathetic to the people who couldn't sleep. I'm like, you know, okay, so what are you doing wrong? Um, And that was naivete. I I wasn't being malicious or anything. I just really didn't understand what it's like to have your mind be on at three o'clock in the morning and you can't turn it off. (laughs) Now I understand that, darn it. Um, I know. (laughs) Yeah. And get out of it. But I believe in that karma stuff. Yeah. Mm. But it was sort of, it was sort of interesting. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I got got some little karma Mm. I could live without. (laughs) No. (laughs) But there's, um, so what you're doing for people now. We have to prioritize our brain's, need sleep mm-hmm. so what you're right. doing for people right now your karma is going to be great you are helping yeah. you are you're going to be you're going to be on that island you're going to be some of those <laughs> mind ties with your honey and you know so um dr cindy or cindy uh where can people find you are you are you um online like what is I have your a, website, I do have a all website. That stuff? I have a website, which is CynthiaAckrill.com. Um, Cynthia, as you would expect, A-C-K-R-I-L-L.com. I okay. would love to tell you it's a super active website. <laughs> but in all my own ADHD, I really don't like working on my website that much. <laughs> <laughs> but there's, there are you got to get a butler. I know there are good resources there and I do post occasionally. So if you sign up for my newsletter, I can promise to you, you will not be inundated with stuff. Sign <laughs> it up. Sign it up. <laughs> yeah, because I don't do that. Um, and, but there are on there, there's a lot of media interviews in there and articles that I've um, been included on as well as some basic information on stress in my blog, which used to be a lot more active than it is. Um, which is something I struggle with because I feel like we're all drowning in over information and we need to go inside and figure out what to do. That said, I think this is a journey and it's a hard journey. So if reaching out to other people who are on it is really important, Mm -hmm. having positive reinforcement for what you're doing in Mm -hmm. at times, joining a group or getting a coach um, to build in that accountability and guidance to do this be kind to yourself. This isn't easy. You're trying 2022, to 2022, the year yeah. of self-care. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> 2022. Is, that's Self-care is leadership. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? Because if you're yeah, taking care of yourself, absolutely. you'll be able to help other people. Yeah. yeah. And I do yeah. hope that our conversations at work start to, you know, if, duh, we figured out people could work from home and get more done. Um, some, is that um, the craziest thing you've ever yeah. heard? So why don't we start looking at the energy a person brings to their work, what they get done, and not the hours that they clock? And why don't we that. have so discussions when we have meetings yeah. at work about how are, how are we as a team? Are we energized right now? What do we need physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually to be on our game? And how do we support each other in getting it? Those are the important conversations that let us be human and live really full, healthy, happy lives. Mental health in general is the most important That's conversation important. we are having right now. Yeah. yeah. Right now. Yeah. So, and, it, it, and, and we shouldn't even have to call it mental health. It is so weird that we, <laughs> we cut ourselves off from the head and have one insurance company for the head up and another mm-hmm. insurance company for the head down. Is it that? That is, we oh my God. Connected. <laughs> I've yeah. never heard it put that way. And that is genius. We are connected. Cindy, thank you. You have it's been fun. just, a, I really, really just no. a great, I loved it. I loved it. Yeah. There's nothing about it I didn't like. Thank you for asking. And we're holding and, you coming back. Um, everybody who's listening, find resources. Start yeah. talking. 
Go on her website. She has some yeah. good ones. I was on there yesterday in the description. So of this yeah, and we'll send you. Out. We'll send you. Um, we'll send you this when we go to Eric. It... Awesome. Yeah. Okay. And then we'll send it to you. Okay. Thank you so much. Right. Have a great day. Have a good Bye. day. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Take thank care. you, everyone, for joining us today. And thank you, Dr. Cindy, for coming on. Be sure to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at all the links listed in the description. And make sure to hit like on this video and subscribe to this channel so you never miss an episode. And if you want to show us a little extra love, we also have a link for donations. Thank you, everyone, once again, and we will see you right here next week at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Goodbye. Goodbye.